Welcome to the Grandpa Demon of Demon List content, raking the entire demon list. The entire top 150 hardest extreme demons. This is the one that won the community poll because of course you guys picked the one that would take me the longest to make, but I respect democracy so here we are. Also just a quick note, I am not going to be judging gameplay because I am not good enough to beat like any of these levels so it seems kind of arbitrary to do so. Plus I don't really have a good background on a lot of these levels and I don't think you do either so I'm not gonna really know much about how many of the victors have ranked the gameplay. There's a lot of really boring levels on this list these days. If you enjoyed today's video, please remember to like and subscribe. You'll see more videos like it, and it helps out the channel a ton. And without further ado, let's get into the video. In last place, at number 150, we have Thinking Space. How shocking. In general, this would speak for itself, but I'm going to justify why it's below a lot of the other levels I'm about to mention. It's specifically in last place because it's somewhat hard to look at because of how, like, random the effects are, and it's kind of epileptic at this point. Although I will admit, this along with like the next 15 to 20 levels are pretty interchangeable because they all suck. So whatever, I, I think this one's worse. At number 149, we have Silent Club Step. Yeah, the level's got history and all that, but I don't think the decoration is good in any way in the slightest. The colors don't mix. It's not great for even 1.8 standards, like, no. At 148, we have Necromancer, because who doesn't want another hell remake of a level that already has remakes? Then randomly introduces white into the level as a color like halfway through the level. Not only is it pointless and bland, but it's also ugly as hell, so yeah. 148. At number 147 we have Silent Club because it is still ugly and kind of bland, but at least it's not completely pointless. It's got some interesting history and some of the parts towards the beginning look kind of cool for the standards of when the level was built, but then you have parts of the level like that pink UFO part that completely ruin it. It's above Silent Club set though. At more than 46 we have Untitled Unmastered. I don't even know how this got rated. I don't understand how this is even like a level. There is like nothing here, dude. At 145 we have Spatial Ew. At 144, we have Dido Hex Dragon. Dido Hextragon? I don't know. It's one of those two. I think it's one of those two pronunciations. I like the idea of making levels in like a 1.6 style, but this level is just nasty. Colors don't work, it's just not. No, no, no. Moving on. At number 143, we have X0. This level has nothing going for it, except it's not quite as absolutely abhorrent in terms of visuals as every level before this. This, along with a lot of levels I'm going to mention in a second, are just going to be levels that you'll hear about in this video and then never again, and you won't remember anything about them. At number 142, we have Mirrored Calamity. There's a couple parts in this that have somewhat interesting ideas, like maybe the color choice could have had something more behind it, but it still looks really bad. At number 141, we have Visible Ray. Ew. Number 140, we have Molten Core. It's like a hell circles level, and it doesn't have anything unique about it. It's very bland. It's got those design choices that you see in like every other level ever. At number 139, we have Sonic Wave. I mean, it's a nine circles reskin. No originality, whatever. Moving on. At number 138, we have Gamma. And as with all of the other Minecap Greek letter series levels, I'm, I don't remember like almost anything about this one, but I don't think the decorations like aged well in the slightest. At number 137, we have Akashic Records, which which is basically just Gamma, like it hasn't aged well at all, but at least it has a few parts that are somewhat more interesting, so it just barely gets out above Gamma. Next up at 136 is Aura, 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 I don't know how to pronounce this, whatever, this level, I, it's still got the same issue as Akashic Records and Gamma, where there's just like the whole white spike blob thing. Again, hasn't aged very well. Next up at 135 we have Calamity, which has nothing special about it. This is like a glorified layout in my opinion, like there's almost no layer or detail in any of the designs, like half of them are just like generic Rob Tob blocks, like what is this, Clutterfunk? Like how is this rated? Speaking of how is this rated, at number 134 we have Arcturus. I've already gone on tangents about Arcturus before, uh, and I'm not going to do a full one today, but essentially it's really short. The end screen is only that long because, well, it needs to be long enough for it to get rated. There's nothing special about the decoration, and pretty much every asset in the level can be found in like other levels, or very similar assets can be found in other levels. It's not original, it works so much better as an impossible level, it sucks, goodbye, we're done, nope, no more. At number 133 we have Abyss of Darkness, which is pretty much the same story, except uh, it's not all red, it does experiment with the color spectrum a little bit more. But there's no theming around darkness, around an abyss, even hell or death, like there are parts that are just random glow for some reason. I think everyone pretty universally does not like Abyss of Darkness very much. And while some of the designs are kind of interesting, there is no theme or consistency throughout the level 
level, so yeah, it's still pretty low. At 132, we have Avernus. Speaking of inconsistency, Avernus has a very inconsistent decoration in terms of quality, theming, color, is pretty much everything. I mean, I've made like a video and a half on this, and a lot of people do not like this level for that exact reason. So this next level might anger some of you, not because it's this low, but because it's actually not as low as some people probably think it should be. Exo. The one by Kermal. The, the literal layout. I should probably justify this. I think that EXO should be above the previous 20-ish levels because this level is unironically more aesthetically pleasing and just overall better to me than every level I've mentioned before. Like, at least this has a couple of somewhat interesting effects and has some form of interesting structuring and some form of consistency, which is a lot more than every other level I've put below. Although, again, I do admit this, along with a lot of levels below it, are somewhat interchangeable because they all kind of just suck. Also, if I get one more comment that's just she's in love with the concept, I'm going to launch myself into orbit and I'm going to nuke the planet. Next up, we have Crimson Planet. Yeah, this is the first level above EXO, because it's the first level that I think is better than just making a layout. I mean, some of the decoration is somewhat interesting, maybe for the time, like the ending part, but there's other parts that just kind of look messy, and it's all like recycled old gameplay from like old Yada CCs, which is even lazier than I am. Also, this is number 45 on the list. What? At number 139 we have Terminal Rampancy. It does have some somewhat interesting stuff in it, but at the end of the day, it's extremely messy and really kind of hard to look at. At number 128, we have Generic Wave. Just because it's a joke level doesn't mean that the bad decoration isn't bad, but at least the point of the level is a little funny, so it's alright, it's just up at 128. At 127, we have Calculator Core. It's pretty much just grayscale deco for about six minutes and then maybe one or two flashes of red in a couple parts. And also, apparently, Wolsey said it was really unoptimized in a video, so that's not great. I will say this level does do a little bit of help to the GD community, because if you're ever struggling with insomnia, you can just turn on a showcase of this level and it'll put you right to sleep because it is six minutes of like the exact same thing. At number 126, we have Jesse Pinkman, which I think is the worst out of the Breaking Bad levels. I don't really like Ren's Breaking Bad series in general because none of the levels have anything to do with Breaking Bad other than maybe the end screen and then the title. Like sure, it's kind of funny to have a demon named Walter White above Bloodlust on the list, but what if the actual level was themed after Walter White instead of it just being generic deco that everyone likes because it's named Walter White? Same thing goes for Jesse Pinkman and all the other Breaking Bad levels. I just think this one's decoration is the worst out of the series. Next up, we have Sonic Wave Rebirth at 125. Some of the effects are kind of interesting, but it hasn't aged well at all, in my opinion. Although I do think it's really funny that forever it will be right next to Sonic Wave on the list. At number 124, we have Sukup and Circles, which is kind of the same thing as Sonic Wave Rebirth, except it has some better effects in it. That doesn't necessarily make it good, but at least it's better than Sonic Wave Rebirth. At 123 we have Citra. It's pretty bland and the colors don't really match for me. At number 122 we have Minus Dry. Now Minus Dry is meant to be like a more legacy sort of gameplay style level. So I understand why it's decorated in the style that it is, but I still think that the style isn't very interesting and is overall still, well, pretty bland. At number 121, we have Fragmented. It's just like generic 1.9 stuff. It's not very great. Number 120, we have Edge of the Blade, which I don't think is very interesting at all. I don't like the decoration. It just doesn't work. It just switches styles out of nowhere. It just doesn't have consistency. At number 119, we have Icotact. It's pretty boring and pretty bland. Next up at 118, we have Launchpad Labyrinth. It at least has some sort of somewhat interesting theming, but everything about this level other than that isn't very good. Like the decoration doesn't look very good. It's not very well detailed. Not very good. At 117 we have Kaoretta. I've never been much of a Kaoretta fan myself, but at least it's somewhat interesting, which is why it's up here. At 116 we have Hyperparacosm. It's a pretty ugly circles level in my opinion. Like the actual circles effect in the level is pretty ugly. It just has like random mechanical blocks in the background for no reason, but at least the pre-drop and post-drop look somewhat interesting. At 115 we have Sonic Wave Infinity. Now, Sonic Wave Infinity is very hated by like a lot of the community because it's apparently over decorated and just switches styles very often. And while I agree with that, I do think some of the parts in this level do look really interesting, like the first wave I think looks somewhat interesting. And the end screen, while it is pretty long, is kind of intriguing. Next up we have Aquatic Auroras. It's like the same thing as Hyperparacosm except slightly less ugly and it's got some fishes in it which is kind of cool. At number 113 we got Cersea Difficult which is kind of funny and it's got some charm to it but it's also pretty bland designs that are just not interesting enough to make this level decent. At 112 we have the Hell Nuts. 
Yeah, it's a joke level, but unironically there are a couple of block designs in this level that look somewhat interesting. At number 111 we got Titan Complex. It'll just randomly switch block designs mid part. I don't like the level, it doesn't have very much consistency between parts. At number 110 we have Sinister Silence. It's pretty generic and boring decoration, but it drags on for 10 minutes, which I know is kind of the point, but it's still pretty bad. At number 109 we have Lucid Nightmares, the infamous extreme demon with the dentist music. Some of the movements in this level are cool enough to make up a little bit for the bad decoration, in this level, but still not enough for it to be any higher on my ranking. At number 108, we have Rage. Yep. Okay, moving on. At number 107, we have Nunry, which isn't too horrible, but it's still very uninteresting. Now it's time for the Blitz round, a round where I go through about 20 levels that have absolutely nothing significant about them and that none of you probably care about. 106, Sephiroth, boring. 105, Kappa, not funny, didn't laugh. 104, infinite iniquity. 103, last chance to look at me, Hector. Number 102, random access memory, forgettable. Number 101, Pagoda, doesn't work at all. 100, Seri never clear, really bad except for the last ship part, but at least it's kind of funny. Number 99, Wide step. It's like sidestep, but like slightly better, but still pretty bad. 98 controller, boring. 97 Sigma, more like cringe 13 year old. 96 Omega, Omega vs. Better plus ratio. 95 Cordier, kind of interesting, but not really. 94 Renovant, a perfect example of how to not make a rainbow level. 93 PPF, overhyped. 92 Repentless. I must have dementia because I can't remember a single thing about this level, like at all. 91 Ragnarok, goofy. 90 Omega Interface, overhyped. 89 Cognition, claustrophobic atmosphere is cool, but nothing about this level sticks out other than that. 88 Twilight, forgettable. 87 Unlevels demos, so it's Literally Phobos just like added glow. 86, Asterios, boring Exxon level. 85, Aronia, boring Exxon level. 84, Chroma Finale. It's got some interesting effects, but it's still kind of overrated. 83, Promethean. <laughs> I mean, at least this Clubstep monster looks cool. 82, Fragile, it's like Shiketsu, but worse. Number 81, Descent into Exile, better to descent into the Exile than Exile into the Descent. I, I don't know. Okay, let's round over. I do mean it when I say I have almost no opinion on the past 20 levels. There are so many levels on the list that are just boring. It's somewhat disheartening. Anyways, next up at number 80 is the Golden, which I think is kind of overhated, but it was also overhyped. Like, it's just okay. I don't really understand why people like or dislike this level very much. At number 79, we have Edge of the World. Imagine thinking that the Earth is flat or round. Nah, bro, it's a cube. At number 78, we have this level I can't pronounce. It is kind of colorful and a little interesting, but still not enough for it to be any higher on the list. At number 77, we have Congregation. This is a really controversial level and kind of always has been because it, on one hand, doesn't have very much going on, but on the other hand, that contributes to the atmosphere. So I think it kind of balances out and just makes it, you know, very central or centered on my ranking. I mean, it's literally 77. It's two spots away from the exact middle. At 76, we have Bloodlust. I think Bloodlust overall does have some interesting designs, and the, the monster that you see throughout the level is just a classic. There's the Bloodlust Moon. There's so much of this that's pretty iconic, and there are some parts like Michigan's part that genuinely do look pretty good. I mean, there are other parts that don't, but overall, I think it is pretty decent, especially for its time. At number 75, we have Sazerix. It's got some interesting effects in it. Ooh, at number 74, we have Super Hate Me World. There is some decoration in this level that does kind of stand out, and the atmosphere is pretty interesting. But what drags down this level is it kind of feels like it's trying too hard to be edgy, which is kind of the point, but at the same time, that doesn't detract from the fact that it is trying too hard. Kind of similar to like a joke level, like just because it's a joke level with bad decoration for the sake of a joke doesn't mean it doesn't have bad decoration. It's not too bad. At number 73 we have Walter White. I already explained why I think the way I do with the Breaking Bad series, so I want to elaborate. At number 72 we have Macabre, which is honestly kind of interesting. I think the pre-drop drags on for too long, but other than that it's not too bad. There just isn't too much interesting about it. At number 71 is Neon Skyline. I couldn't find the verification video, it was just a rickroll and I hate everyone now. The actual level is somewhat interesting, but it's also pretty messy in some parts. At number 70 we have Lotus Flower. Some of the stuff in this level is super interesting, but in other parts it's just really bland and empty spaces everywhere. At number 69 <laughs> we have The Rupture, which is pretty much the same case as Lotus Flower to me. Same thing with Spectrum Cyclone at 68 here. At number 67 we have Critical Heat, which does have some interesting theming, but I do think the decoration is kind of bland. I've said bland so many times in this video, oh my goodness. At number 66 we have Sync, which I think is the first level on this list that doesn't have something like glaringly wrong with it for me. Like it is kind of cool, I just wish there were more pulses in the level. I don't like the style too much either, but that's not really a big deal. We're kind of crossing into the levels that are okay. At number 65 we have Sparkling. I mean, as the name suggests, the decoration on the level kind of sparkles, and it's kind of interesting. At number 64, we have Kiri's. Now, this level is extremely forgettable. Like, everyone forgets that this level exists. 
I only remember this level because I remember it as forgettable, however, some of the designs in this level do look pretty cool. Also, if you do go look at a showcase of it, it does have one of Kulluk's earliest parts, like way before he got as good as he is now, which is kind of interesting. At 63, we have Kinos, Iconic, it's okay. It's not really interesting, but it's not messy. At number 62, we have no jokes. Unironically, the first half of the level doesn't look bad, and then the second half looks bad because it's meant to look bad, which I'm not saying to excuse it. I actually think that the quote-unquote bad decoration doesn't look too horrible, it's just that the colors don't match very well. At 61, I put Zodiac. I think Zodiac does a really good job of building intensity towards the end of the level, and even though some of the parts in this level don't look very good, like TMN or that one part with the background logo clipping through it, and it makes me absolutely livid every time I talk about the level. There are some pretty interesting parts in the level as well. Like in terms of generic like 2018 era collabs, it does very well. At number 60 we have The Art of the Blade. Despite the fact that this level has absolutely egregious gameplay, I'm not allowed to talk about gameplay. That being said, that some of the decoration in this level is pretty cool, although I think it kind of falls off in the second half of the level. At number 59, we have Ellipsism, which has some really interesting effects in it. It just doesn't stick out too, too much. At 58, we have Slaughterhouse. My opinion on Slaughterhouse has shifted pretty drastically over the past year or so. I will still say that I do not like the pre-drop, and I do not like the beginning of the drop up until River's part, because I think it's a lot less interesting and well-decorated than the second half of the level, with the exception of the Ram Skull art or whatever. But even if so, the level does do a really good job of building intensity through the song choice and the gameplay. Theming and atmosphere is on point. Could have been better, but it's not bad. Same thing with the next level at 57, Iris of a Puppeteer. It's got some interesting theming choices, but there are parts of the level that are just kind of not as well decorated. At number 56, we have Lumina. Lumina makes me congregation but better vibes. Overall, I think the level is kind of cool. At number 55, we have Tartarus. Now, similar to Slaughterhouse, I do think that some of the decoration towards the beginning of the level isn't as good as some of the decoration towards like the second half of the level. And overall, with Tartarus, in addition to that, I don't think that the decoration is very interesting because it's all just generic 1.9 to me. But there's nothing necessarily too wrong about it. There are some parts of the level that do look kind of cool. At number 54, we have Golden Club. The best way I can describe my opinion on this level is that for what it's trying to do, it does look very good, but what it is trying to do isn't very good. I don't really like this level's theme, and I think the choice of color is pretty ugly, but for what it is trying to do, it does it pretty well. At number 53, we have Truefet. I think Truefet is a bit overhyped, but that doesn't mean it's bad, so it's kind of landed here at 53. At number 52, we have Hard Machine. There are some parts of this level that actually look really cool for some reason. Just like the coloring of the level is very intriguing and kind of interesting to me. But there's also other parts of the level that are just pretty dark and don't really have anything going on. At 51, we have Oblivion, which is basically cognition but better, although it's still not that interesting to me. At number 50, we have Arctic Lights. Now, I like the circles effect in Arctic Lights, but I still don't really think there's too much that makes makes it stand out. At number 49 we have Dump. I like Dump's theming and its background, but again there's not too much that differentiates it. At 48 we have Unknown. It does have some cool effects like the club step monster retreating into the background, and the block design being kind of like scratched out almost. But it's also really short and there isn't very much that makes it that interesting other than a few effects. Next up is Acheron at 47. I like how Acheron has more grayscale while also having red color in it. It's basically just a better version of Tartarus in my opinion. The song choice is better, the sync is better. The only thing I don't really like about it is that it doesn't really have much of a theme, which kind of makes it less interesting, which is why it's not higher on the list. Next up is Goner at 46, which has some cool effects, but it's just not that interesting to me. At number 45, we have everyone's favorite new hardest, Wasseretta. I do kind of like the decoration in this level, and I think it flows well, but it's not too, too interesting. There's nothing about it that really sticks out to me, but it is a level that a lot of people like because of its gameplay, but it definitely serves its purpose. Next up is Atomic Cannon, which I actually think is really cool. I like how the color seamlessly changes from part to part, and I think that the movements and block design really complement each other to make the level have a nice flow. Next up at 43 is Sizzlack. This level's pretty cool. It's got a lot of like mechanical tech design. Speaking of tech designs, if you can decorate space backgrounds or like tech block designs, feel free to DM me on Discord or join my Discord server and ping me there if you are interested in taking a part in Challenger, my upcoming entry extreme demon that's space and tech themed. At number 42, we have Eternal Moment. I think all around the decoration in this level is pretty interesting. There's not really much else to say, I just kind of like it. At number 41, we have Of Ambrosia. I do like the effects in this level a lot, 
but because you can't really see any of the gameplay, it kind of makes it less interesting, at least from a visual perspective. At number 40, we have Schmarleville, which I think is a really interesting effect level. I like how it's fast paced, I think it's a nice level. Next up at 39, we have Akira, an extreme demon that uses a mirror portal and looks cool while doing it. Sign me up, this is a good level. Next up at 38 is Rift. I like this level personally, I mean, this is my ranking, but that's mostly because it uses 1.9 block designs effectively in 2.1 in a way that still makes them interesting, with lots of effects and things like that. At number 37 we have Verdant Landscape, overall a kind of solid level, although some of the stuff like the backgrounds are just like scaled up blocks that are like one or two objects and it's kind of weird, but whatever. At number 36 is Escape Room, I like darker levels like this that aren't like hell themed, I think it's really interesting. At number 35 we have Mayhem, which I think is all around a pretty decent level in terms of decoration. Maybe not so much in gameplay, but again, doesn't really matter for this ranking. At number 34, we have Saul Goodman. I'm pretty sure this is the highest ranking Breaking Bad level on my ranking here. I do think that this level holds up without it being called Saul Goodman. However, I am still disappointed by it because all of the Breaking Bad levels have nothing to do with Breaking Bad. Number 33, I put Pukubed. This level has some pretty cool decoration, especially the part that's like above the clouds and sort of like a heaven area. It's probably one of my favorite Lisp levels. At number 32, we have the Hallucination, which is an amazing circles level, but you can't see your trail for most of the level, which is kind of weird to me. The most level, I mean like the wave part. At number 31, we have Shiketsu. I actually really like Shiketsu. I think like the glass pane sort of decoration towards the end of the level is especially really unique. What's also fun that a lot of people don't remember is that this was verified on the exact same day as Abyss of Darkness. At number 30, we have Firework. I like Firework. I think it's kind of underrated. I do think it does a really good job of building intensity towards the end of the level, especially with uh, the orb ship. That's pretty iconic. It's just such a shame that this was never really like a true top 1 for more than like 18 seconds because Space UK hacked Slaughterhouse because it was hyped up as a top 1 for long before and it turned out that it should have been top 1 for like at least a couple months, which is just kind of sad. Next up at 29 is Luchiverse. It's funny, it's cool, I think the decoration holds up, yeah. Okay, so these next few levels I don't really have much to say on other than I really like the decoration and the theming for each level, respectively. At number 28 we have Gracefully, at number 27 we have Silentium Clavas, which is basically like Silent Club, but with new decoration and better in terms of gameplay, so I really like that level as well. Same thing with Directions at number 26, and Cold Sweat at number 25, and Esfera at number 24, Shardscapes at number 23. Like, I mean, there's not really much I can say about any of these levels that hasn't been said already. They're all pretty solid. At 22, I put Kayuki. I do like Kayuki. I mean, it's a solo level. It does a good job of building a good atmosphere. It flows well. It's overall pretty nice. I don't think that it's like absolutely outstanding though. It is really good. It's just not like the best level in the game. At number 21, I put Cybernetic Crescent. I think Cybernetic Crescent gets a little bit of too much hate. While it doesn't really match artificial and digital, it's probably the one out of the trilogy that focuses on the original theme the most. And I think it has some of the best decoration, plus I'm judging it as an individual level anyways. Entering the top 20, we have Shutdown, which I just think has some cool gimmicky stuff in the decoration. This might be a little bit controversial, but at number 19, I put Molten Gear because I think Molten Gear is heavily underrated. Maybe I'm just nostalgia blind, but I still really like the level. I know a lot of parts aren't really great for today's standards, but I still think the boss fight is absolutely amazing. But whatever, I mean, this list isn't necessarily objective, it's all just based off of my opinion. But yeah, also, fuck you, Manix, for cancelling Fusion Z, you fucking prick. At number 18, I put Lights and Thunder. I actually do really like the designs in Lights and Thunder. They're a bit more uniform, but I still think that it does really well, and I also like the space background towards the end. It also just flows really well as a level. At number 17, I put Sand Sailor. The designs in this level are very unique and not really something that we see very often, and I do think it's done really well as well. Part of me kind of tries to connect it back to Rain, which is also a level that I like. So yeah, overall pretty cool level. At number 16, we have Requiem. I actually really like Requiem. I think it does a good job of like building intensity and I think it does it better than Killbot. Like the flashes of stuff on the screen, like blocking your vision are much more aesthetically pleasing as much as flashing random stuff on your screen can be aesthetically pleasing, I guess. Can I not get a notification for like five minutes? At number 15, I put the Yandir or Yandere or whatever. I put it this high because I think it has some really interesting theming. It has some cool effects and gimmicks, and all around is a very interesting and well-decorated level. I didn't put it too high though, because, I mean, yeah, anime girls, but like, not- I don't- girls aren't really that interesting to me. I mean, w wait, shit. At number 14 we have Storming Summit, which I think overall is a really interesting level, and it was made after another video game, which is always kind of cool. Next up is Terminux at 13. I think Terminux is also pretty underrated. It's probably one of my favorite just design-based levels out there. I also like the level's theme and its end screen. It's all really cool. Number 12, we have 
Frozen Cave. Frozen Cave is a banger. It flows well. It's got cool backgrounds. It's got really nice theming that's very well integrated into the level. It's pretty cool. At number 11, I put Ouroboros, which might not be a very popular opinion, but I still really like Ouroboros. I think it was nice that it tried to experiment with putting purple and orange in the same level, when most levels usually choose one color and then maybe do some colors that are adjacent to it on the color wheel occasionally throughout the level. The actual boss fight looks pretty cool as well. And I also really like the structuring in this level. So now we're moving up to my top 10 favorite levels on the entire demons list. At number 10, we have Solar Flare. What I really like about this level is just how laid back it is. It's not trying to be top 10 or really just top 20. It's just sort of like a more relaxed sort of just vibe. It's mostly yellow and orange, but it does have some blue in the level. I did make a whole video on this level if you'd like to check it out. At number 9, we have Ruthless. Ruthless is super underrated. The backgrounds are amazing, the theming and lighting in the level is really cool, and also the end screen is just amazing. Next up at number 8 is Aerial Gleam. Aerial Gleam is a banger. It has almost no pre-drop, which is already amazing. And then the drop wave progressively gets better and better in terms of decoration, and there's barely even a post-drop. Like. How, 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 like, this is, that's, that's literally everything I've ever wanted, ever. At number seven, we have Neutra. I really like Neutra. It kind of does its own thing and has its own type of style, which is something I really appreciate because a lot of extreme demons try to, like, fit in the same formula, and Neutra doesn't really do that. And it really succeeds in what it's trying to do. Also, it's an Aeon verification, so I imagine it's pretty good to play. At number six, we have Cosmic Cyclone. I think Cosmic Cyclone is overhated. A lot of people hate AP Team because of Sonic Wave Infinity, and while I don't like Sonic Wave Infinity as evidenced by this video, Cosmic Cyclone is a really good level. The decoration is pretty unique. There are a couple parts that aren't perfect, but I do overall think that it is really cool. There's space backgrounds and other nods to space throughout the level, including the one part that has like sort of a black hole with the cubes of a lot of AP team members like circling around it. The end screen isn't half an hour long, and the level is pretty consistent in terms of decoration and I think gameplay. At number five, we have Rust. I of course really like Rust. I think overall it's a very unique and interesting level while also having an attention to detail that is admirable. The only thing I don't like about this level is that the ending seems sort of dragged out, which I don't think was necessary. I think it would still be a really cool level without the ending cube, but it doesn't really detract from the level that much. At number four, we have Cosmos. Again, since I'm judging with pretty much nothing in terms of gameplay, Cosmos lands pretty high because honestly, it is a really cool level, especially after the update. There is a bit of inconsistency between styles and different parts, but every part, at least individually, looks amazing, and overall, it doesn't really detract from the level much. So for the top three, I like all three of these levels. I would probably give each of them a 10 out of 10. Maybe not in gameplay, but in everything else. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Really, it just comes down to small stylistic preferences between the three. So without further ado, at number three, we have Nelf. Nelv is a really cool and well-renowned level throughout the entirety of the GD community for its effects and its intensity. It matches the song really well. All around, it's a really amazing level. At number two, we have Edge of Destiny. Edge of Destiny has amazing decoration, amazing theming, and overall just a really interesting concept for a level. Unnerfed Blade of Justice never really got to see the light of day properly, and now Edge of Destiny has allowed it to. There is only one level that I would consider better than it that is currently on the demons list. And finally, at number one, we have Limbo. Limbo was always one of my favorite upcoming extreme demons, and now it's one of my favorite extreme demons. It has a really cool concept. The execution of that concept is spot on. The decoration in most parts is pretty good, and the gimmicks in the level make it extremely interesting. So yeah, that is the entire demon list ranked. Obviously, I wasn't able to go into too much detail for most of the levels on the list because that would take like eons. But if you do want to see something like this covered in much more detail, my my good friend Nothing Is Scary has an entire series dedicated to ranking the entire Demons list, which allows him to go into much more detail into each level. So if you'd like to check that out, the link to his channel is in the description. If you'd like to join my Discord server, the link is in the description. Maybe you want to try out for Challenger or something like that because we need decorator. If you enjoyed today's video, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps out the channel a ton, yada yada yada. You get the idea. And um, yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.